it's almost an area that is a for me, a little, you know, it's, uh, I'm Italian, but more kind of mafioso style. Uh, um, well, you know, in the beginning when you're with a band and, and you keep hearing, because we, we certainly didn't get paid in the beginning, you know, we'd ha after a job, we'd have to sit around and, you know, well, we had to pay uh, the advertising, we had to do this, and we had to do that, and, uh, you know, it was very little money for the band. And when I say very little, very little. And, you know, after a while, um, you say, well, man, we're playing for a lot of people. You know, when are we going to get a little money here? Uh, so the situation was always, uh, you know, you think you're going to do this, and then you end up, because I remember in New York, uh, we played the Garrick Theater for I don't know the whole summer, and we thought, boy, when this is over, we're you know we're going to have all this money that we're going to divide up, and and the usual because uh, during the band meetings, you know, let's stick together. We're gonna you know we're gonna make it. We're gonna be rich and famous and all these things. And uh, uh, we got famous, but uh, you know the, the money situation certainly eluded us and. Um, it was only in the last part of the band's existence that we actually got a weekly salary of, I think, uh, 200 and, 225 $250, which didn't last too long. Uh, so I think the band was always wary of, you know, Herb as, because he's the manager, you know. Um, why aren't we getting compensated you know, after, you know, anyway. A lot of times in the recording studio, uh, if, if uh, Frank wanted a high voice, uh, Roy was uh, the one to do it. And, um, and uh, all, always uh, provided, him and Jimmy Cowblack, always provided uh, between the way they talk to each other, you know, you couldn't understand what they were saying, uh, but always provided uh, some humor that uh, Frank always enjoyed. And another thing that Frank enjoyed was freaking out on your instrument, you know, just, you know, just going wild. Uh, and, and Motorhead could do that too, but uh, those kind of things uh, always at some point in the concert uh, made Frank laugh, and he, and he enjoyed it. And he always would try and, you know, get somebody uh, to do that, whether it would be playing their instrument or just getting up on stage and making a total ass out of himself. So, uh, and I think, again, that was really uh, necessary uh, for survival in some ways of, um, of uh, you know, bringing out the... Uh, whatever is inside of you that has been, you know, tightly uh, kept in. No, no, it wasn't a waitress. Um, I believe it was in 1959, uh, I played quite a while in Columbus, Ohio. And uh, it was a, a jazz it was more than a jazz job. Uh, we, uh, that's where Ohio State University, anyhow, uh, we'd have guys uh, re coming down reading poetry that we would improvise, and it was you know, a very you know, interesting period. And obviously I met uh, quite a few females, and one of them, uh, her name was uh, Peggy, um, who at, at one point uh, moved down to... Uh, to uh, Florida, but uh, she showed up uh, at a few concerts, uh, at, at, and this was later, you know, like five years later, um, and um, very vocal. And you know, the guys in the band got me to put a, a, a tape recorder, you know, uh, by the bed, and, uh, you know, we provided them with about two, three hours of and that's the kind of thing that Roy loved. So he would start mimicking the way, ah, ah, oh, bonk, you know, that kind of thing. And well, Frank 
loved that kind of stuff. So, you know, we worked on that for, for a while. And, uh, you know, Peggy didn't, you know, it, it didn't, you know, say, oh, how could you do something like that? You know, she had a sense of humor. But it was always those kind of things that, um, that kept the band, uh, you know, in good spirits, and especially Frank. Any, any new material or whatever uh, that could contribute to um, an experience for the audience, uh, that was uh, always welcomed.